Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about breast cancer and breast cancer treatment disparities in the queer community. It's really important that people not be made invisible. It's also important that people who are queer, people who are trans, who have breast cancer are treated with dignity. And one thing we know is that that's often not the case. So let's talk a little bit about risk of cancer in people who are queer, why that might be, and what can be done about it, and some tips for you or your loved one going through cancer and its treatment. So breast cancer obviously occurs in breast tissue. Anybody with breast tissue, men, women, anybody can be at risk for breast cancer. Breast cancer tends to be more aggressive in people who live under very stressful conditions, like conditions of stigma. And I just want to temper the word aggressive. What we mean is more active. Because people who are queer are excluded from public health campaigns like mammography screening, uh, anything else that shows people where there's outreach being done because the queer community is really quite invisible, people often feel that they're excluded, that things don't apply to them, or they feel invisible, which can make people feel othered, like they don't belong. And this can be disenfranchising. This can make you feel like this isn't important, you're not important, and that's really where things go wrong in healthcare and in public health. The other thing we know is that when somebody is on hormones to increase their breast tissue, this is associated with a higher risk of breast cancer, but it's not higher than people who have regular breast tissue that is not induced through exogenous hormones or hormones that we take. So really there's no reason to avoid taking hormones uh, in terms of a breast cancer risk. Now, if you are disenfranchised from the healthcare system and if you're stigmatized or othered, it can be very hard to access healthcare that feels safe to you. So going for a mammogram when you feel that you're invisible or not safe can be difficult. What can you do about this? This is just screening and detection of breast cancer. There are a few things you can do. One is you can look to see if the place that you're going has an anti-discrimination statement on their website or their cancer center specifically for people who are queer. You want to see if that's present, and if it's not, you might want to read reviews of people in your community who have been to that center. The other thing you can do is connect with a navigator. Let them know you're concerned ahead of time. This is a navigator who works for the healthcare system. And in doing so, you can sort of take the pulse of the place. You wanna make sure you feel safe. The other thing you can do is make sure you don't go alone. Though you may need to be prepared if you have a partner of the same sex that they not be treated the same way they would be if they were a partner of the opposite sex. I think that being prepared, which is something that you face all the time, um, can help you and making sure you feel safe is really important. And if you don't, finding care elsewhere. This can obviously slow down your getting proper care. But in the case of breast cancer, even breast cancer that's more active, you have time to find a place where you feel safe. The other thing you can do is reach out to patient relations and ask them at, this is at, their, at the treatment center where you're thinking about going, what the experiences have been for people who identify as queer. Once you're diagnosed with cancer, if you're on hormones, you may be told that you can't be on hormones when you're getting treated for cancer. We actually have no proof that that's the case. And so you'll want to make sure that you advocate for yourself and perhaps the person involved in your gender affirming care can be an advocate for you as well. If chemotherapy increases the risk of blood clots, which it can, and hormone therapy increases the risk of blood clots, which it can though to not as great an extent as you may hear, we have ways of managing this. There are people who have an increased risk of blood clots for other reasons. 
you're being told that you have to come off your hormones is not actually true. You want to go to a place where you can have shared decision making about the best care for you. I want to get back to this idea of stigma and stress. Being a member of a stigmatized group, being a group that doesn't feel safe in medical environments means that you are dealing with more stress when you get appropriate treatment for breast and other cancer. What you want to do is do everything you can to decrease stress, not just on your own, but environmentally. So as I mentioned, reaching out to patient relations, doing your research on the place you're going to get your care, and then of course doing things that help you manage stress. This is not about bubble baths and meditation. This is about finding the ways you have dealt with stress in the past and making sure that you plug into those sources of support. Yes, yoga might be helpful. Yes, acupuncture might be helpful and meditation might be helpful, but this really is on the system. It's not on you specifically. All that being said, until the system catches up, making sure you do those things that help you can be really crucial during cancer and its treatment. And it's often the case that when we're under stress, we forget to take care of ourselves. So I would just encourage you or your loved ones to make sure you do everything that you know has helped you in the past, because this is not your first rodeo. I've covered a lot, and this is a really serious subject. So make sure you reach out to people, drop a comment, or a question in the chat will get back to you as soon as possible. And if this has been helpful to you, you'll wanna click like and subscribe because what that does is it helps other people just like you find this video. And we'll take all the feedback that we can uh, in future videos. Thanks for watching.